I mean, Tom, we've talked a lot about this, but what do you make of this, this grandiose gesture? I mean, on one level, we could say, well, it shows it must be a serious situation because he didn't fly two weeks ago when Charles had his benign prostate uh, procedure, but he's flown straight in here. That does suggest to me it must be serious, but this rift with William looks pretty implacable. If you can't come together at a moment like this, when can you? Well, I, as I said last night to you, I was very suspicious about the dash. And I won't be surprised at all, as I hinted yesterday, if he flies back tonight or tomorrow. I think it was all just for show. I think that it was an impromptu way of getting attention. I think he's a very suspicious man. He's wrote his book for money. He's been very disloyal. And I'd be very surprised if he met Camilla when he met the father. When mm. he met the father. And I think the only person he might meet but now would be uh, Beatrice or Eugenie, mm. but otherwise he'll go back. And I think that there's absolutely no hint of reconciliation. His wife is the most bitter, unreconciled woman there is. He'll be told that, in any case, there's no future for him. And I'm told that William's real rage is about what Harry wrote about his wife. And he's right, but he's absolutely right. Yeah, he is. What he wrote was absolutely grotesque. Yeah. Only for money. Yeah. And, and he's been terrible about his father as well. I but mean, I don't think we, we should be too suspicious about a son wanting to have contact with his ageing, ill father. I think that is a, a very simple, familial transaction. Whatever water's gone under the bridge, I think it's all too easy to cast dispersions, and one hopes that Charles is, is well, larger Well, the dispersions are cast that. because of the track record of Harry and his wife in the last four, he five years. He dashed off after the coronation. He was pretty un... un but they have a um, missed well, chance to sell... He's made mistakes. ...to sell trash about their family. And Let's not only clear. that, he, he briefed Ermin Scobie for the second book, which was a disgraceful book. We discussed that at the time. Uh, totally but, he, would, he wouldn't... He, he would have uh, got it in the neck if he hadn't come. I mean, yes, you said earlier, true. you know, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. I think... Um, the, 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 the jury stays out until we see how, uh, you know, this, this trip is over. Does he use it as an opportunity to grandstand, or is what it really...? What does the King really feel about this situation with Harry and also about the situation between his two sons? Uh, with Harry, its door is always open territory. It's, it's, he is forgiving. He is not one to, to feud on this. I think he'd much rather uh, take a... Mm. A, a, a bit of a hit and and and, and have a, a much more normal relationship when it comes to the the brothers i think it, he, he views it as look i it, that's for william i can't sort of step in here He'd what love about to see camilla it. camilla in all this because she's had to step up now not just with the duties she's performing may take on some of the kings but also this is the love of her life who is facing this enormous personal health challenge sure but as you know piz camilla's a, a broad-shouldered woman she's a mother herself Things get complicated. We know that Harry retreated into his bedroom. He well, I'm really talking to you actually about Char but, her, her feelings about what's going on mm. with Charles. Oh, uh, well, right. Well, I think what's interesting about Camilla is the way in which she's risen to the occasion. She's had these solo events. She looks impeccable. It doesn't even look like she's having this sort of personal storm going on in her private life. And I think that this will reframe her in many ways. And it will also, I think, help set the tone for Harry's re-entry. They all... Those two, they're mature adults, Camilla and Charles. They want this... Well, to Tom, one get thing's better. for sure. They will know better than anybody that you can be very disliked by the British public and bring things back. Yeah. They're both massively more popular, Charles and Camilla, than they were in the aftermath of Diana's but death. But you're assuming something. Harry wants to come back. Well, I, yeah. I don't believe that for a moment. Yeah, that may not be I don't case. think he wants to. I don't think Meghan wouldn't dream of wanting to live in rainy London. She loves California, mm. and that's where their life is. And I think he just... Felt. I mean, you know, this is a man who a couple of weeks ago went to Jamaica, which he knew was a sensitive spot, just to stir up publicity, mm. just to earn some more money and cause a lot of trouble for Britain mm. there. You know, that couple are just they're intent on causing trouble. That is their meal ticket. Tom, I don't think that we should cast everything they do through the prism of Great Britain. Well, I actually, actually, we should judge, we should that, judge that, them that on Harry their actions. Aspects of and Britain. their actions have been extremely damaging to the monarchy, the royal family, and to this country. So exactly. if they change their behaviour, I'm prepared to change my view of them and the criticism. But Robert, just, just, just finally, this is a big thing for the country to have to deal with this again, coming so soon after the Queen's death, Prince Philip's death. You've got Kate, who's just been in hospital. You know, Fergie, Duchess of York, has had two bouts of cancer now. It's, it's a tough time for people who, like me and you, love the royal family and the monarchy. It, it is a tough time, and it, it's... it's uh you know, come at just as uh, the monarchy had sort of consolidated itself. I mean, he had enormous shoes to fill, 
King Charles, yeah. you know. I mean, and, and a lot of people predicted it was going to be an uphill challenge and he would stray off into politics, he would blunder here and there, there'd be a rise in republicanism. That hasn't been. I think the monarchy is, is, is in a very solid place. I think he's done a good job in less than a year and a half of consolidating it. And along comes this. But he's had plenty of other... Uh, shocks that yes, be beyond his control. I mean, when you think of, uh, you know, not just two rounds of The Crown, plus the Harry yep. and Meghan's Netflix thing, plus... There's always, Spare, some, there's always plus something, the right? the saga of, of, of uh, Andrew. And, and then not to mention, we haven't even gotten to republicanism in the other realms and all yep. that. And yet, we up until last week, we weren't really thinking about the monarchy because it was doing what it always does. It was it had got boring, which is where it, it just, used to be. We, listen, we've run, out, we've run out of time, but if you want to know more about the monarchy, read this. New King, New Court, Charles III, the inside story. Oh, the inside man, Robert Harman, great to see you. Congratulations. Thank great you. to see you too. Thank you very much.